pass the organizational colors to the commander of U.S. Central Command, General Joseph L. Votel, who will pass them to the incoming. Everybody, it's great, uh, great to be back here uh, in uh, in Kuwait, my second home. Uh, it's uh, always always good to be back here. Thank you, gentlemen, for for being here. Let me also up front just thank the Joint Visitor Bureau, uh, the CJTF OIR staff, the Color Guard, um, our band uh, back here, uh, and everyone else who had a hand in putting together this very uh, significant event here this morning. To the sergeant majors, uh, everyone looks sharp as we would expect from either the 18th Airborne Corps or the 3rd Armored Corps leadership here. Uh, I do want to acknowledge the presence of our uh, Deputy Chiefs of Mission, uh, Patricia Fites, and Deputy Chief of Mission, Joey Hood, uh, from uh, uh, from up in Baghdad, uh, Patricia and Joey, thanks very much for uh, for being here, uh, and uh, that just really your presence here highlights the importance of our continued military-civilian partnership uh, as we pursue this very very important mission, not only on behalf of our country but on behalf of the coalition. Uh, Lieutenant General Mike Garrett, thanks very much for uh, for being here as well. Mike, thanks for for uh, for joining us. Uh, to our Kuwaiti hosts here, uh, Major General Abdullah, the commander of the uh, Kuwaiti Naval Forces, and Major General uh, Khalid al-Sabah, uh, the commander of the Kuwaiti Land Forces, and, and our other Kuwaiti officers, thank you very much for attending. Uh, there is no other country in the world that provides uh, as uh, exceptional support as the country of Kuwait does to the United States and indeed to our broader coalitions, and we're very, very glad to be partnered with you. Thank you very much for your continued, continued support. During this transfer of authority ceremony this morning, we take the opportunity to highlight the accomplishments of CJTF OIR under the outstanding leadership of Lieutenant General Steve Townsend and Command Sergeant Major Ben Jones of the 18th Airborne Corps. I should also recognize Major General Rupert Jones, uh, one of the deputies who's, uh, who's also, uh, we recognized a little bit earlier today, who also departs today but has been a key part of this command team moving forward. We also use this occasion to give a warm welcome to the command team of Lieutenant General Paul Funk and Command Sergeant Major uh, Mike Crosby of Third Corps. This ceremony is not so much about change, but it's really about continuity. And although there will be some personnel changes in the headquarters, the campaign itself continues to move on. For example, when Third Corps was here the last time, just a little bit over a year ago, they were instrumental in greatly increasing the pressure on ISIS and setting conditions by training and equipping Iraqi security forces and Syrian opposition groups. Their hard work led to the recapturing of Fallujah in the airfield at Kiara, posturing the ISF to begin clearing Mosul the ISIS stronghold here in, in Iraq. Over the last 13 months, 18th Airborne Corps, building upon Third Corps' success, uh, enabled the ISF to fully retake Mosul and, be, um, and, the, and the Syrian Defense Forces to begin clearing the important city of Raqqa, the global capital of ISIS. It wouldn't have been possible without the continuity between these two U.S. Army Corps, build upon, building upon each other's success in the overall strength of the coalition. This doesn't mean that we can't take time to appreciate what this particular command team uh, from the 18th Airborne Corps has accomplished over the last 13 months, a time period which has proven to be decisive in the Defeat ISIS campaign. Steve, you and your team have made tremendous progress. You've increased the capabilities of the Iraqi security forces and significantly degraded the ability of ISIS to plan, resource, and execute attacks worldwide. Here are just a few accomplishments. The command trained and equipped nearly 121,000 Iraqi security forces. This is the equals to about 19 brigades. Those forces, together with existing forces and the support of the coalition, recaptured over 17,300 square kilometers of territory previously held by ISIS in Iraq. They recaptured 23,000 square kilometers of the territory previously held by ISIS in Syria. Among the cities and towns liberated by the ground forces with the support of the coalition were towns like Sherkat in Mosul in Iraq and Tabqa in Maskana in, in Syria. By liberating these cities and towns, they set free uh, over 1.8 million men, women, and children in Iraq and over a million in Syria. Since the 21st of August, 
which is of 2016, which is when General Townsend in the 18th Airborne Corps com assumed command of CJTF OIR. Over 33,000 ISIS militants have been removed from the battlefield to include dozens and dozens and perhaps hundreds of senior leaders. You've also deprived the enemy of over $51 million in revenue through Operation Tidal Wave and the numerous strikes conducted on ISIS bulk cash storage sites. You've helped the Iraqis to build much needed capacity and in the process you've enabled them to become a force capable of success in Mosul and most recently in Tal Afar. And the list goes on and on and on. Today, the CJTF sits squarely in phase three of our campaign plan, accelerating our efforts to defeat and indeed annihilate ISIS. This goal is now within our reach. As you've heard me mention, this fight is only possible through the broader coalition of more than 60 partner nations, 64 to be exact. It is certainly not an overstatement to say the coalition is the true, thing, true strength of this campaign. We've heard it said so many times, but it's as true now as it ever has been. I want to take a moment to acknowledge our coalition members and our other regional partners, especially those who are with us today. And as, the, as, our, as our host introduced a number of our, our visitors today, it should be as no surprise we have a number of ambassadors and others from our coalition countries with us today. And ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you being here. You honor us by your friendship and your presence. And we remain enormously grateful for your sacrifices and the contributions of your nations towards this important fight. Steve, you've led this organization masterfully. You've had to build and maintain numerous relationships, some more contentious than others, but have done so with tact, skill, and an obvious desire to do what was best for the campaign and for the coalition. You have brought a high level of professionalism to this organization through your four things to remember as part of your leadership philosophy. I know that the team here has inculcated your intent and will continue to live on amber long after you depart. You can take pride in your team's achievement over these last 13 months. The victories were hard fought and the setbacks, while minor and very seldom, were heartbreaking. But you are not, uh, I know you're not one to rest on your laurels. You've also spent a good deal of time setting up your replacements for success. Initiatives such as Reliable Partnership show the vision you have for the future of our broader partnership with Iraq and our wider role in the region. I think if I let you stay for another 13 months, and I won't, um, I'm confident there would be even more initiatives that you'd be ready to run by me. I know this wasn't possible without the steadfast support that you and Ben and indeed all the members of your uh, command uh, received from your families at home. And I hope that you will pass our best and our thanks to Melissa and Sergeant Major Jones, to your wife, Leah, uh, our appreciation for their great support. I want to personally thank you for all your hard work, your strong leadership, your wise counsel, and your candor in tackling these complex problems. I know that uh, you will continue to do great things on behalf of our Army and our nation in the days ahead. We wish you and your families the very best of luck and Godspeed going forward. As I mentioned next door, personally, I will miss our weekend phone calls. Uh, and now that I know that you actually were trying to answer correctly, I'm, uh, all, all is forgiven, Steve. Those actually were, were actually uh, always the most informative uh, ways for me to kind of complete the feedback loop. So thanks for, thanks for telling me like it is. And although it's always tough to bid farewell to an outstanding command team, we are very fortunate to have another great team in Lieutenant General Paul Funk and Command Sergeant Major Mike Crosby. Paul is a highly respected leader and a warfighter with a well-deserved reputation as a strategic thinker and a team builder. And I'm confident that he and Command Sergeant Major Crosby will take this outstanding team and make it even better. Paul, as you already well know, while commanding CJTF OIR, you'll also be dual-hatted as the commander of the famed 3rd Armored Corps. So you two will have a night job. Don't, don't worry, the time difference will allow you to put in another full day's work after the team in Baghdad and Kuwait go to sleep. To the broader CJTF OIR team, you should know that we are all incredibly proud of each and every one of you. Your mission is extraordinarily important. And even as we live in a world where continued security crises continue to uh, emerge almost on a daily basis, this fight is a fight that we must win. While much of the world and even your families back home might not know exactly what you are doing or how you are contributing to defeating ISIS way over here, 
rest assured that through your individual and collective efforts, you are having an extraordinary impact. I challenge all of you to keep up the great work. Be safe and make sure that you look out for one another. Steve, thanks again. Safe travels home. Paul, I look forward to working with you in the days and weeks ahead on issues of great importance uh, to each of our nations and certainly to our campaign plan. Thanks for taking on this important responsibility. I know that you will do an outstanding job. We wish you and your team the very best of luck and Godspeed. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Thanks to everyone for coming. Uh, to our ambassadors and deputy chiefs of mission, welcome. To all the general officers here and especially our Kuwaiti hosts uh, and our hosts from uh, Third U.S. Army are sent. Um, General Votel, uh, thanks for, your, for you graciously hosting our ceremony today and your, great, your kind remarks. To all the members of the CJTF here, uh, over a year ago, after taking those same colors uh, from my good friend Sean McFarland, uh, I announced the objectives of our tour of duty. First, to increase our rate and volume of coalition fires to suppress ISIS while our Iraqi partners consolidated, then at Kiara and our Syrian partners consolidated at Manbij, both of which had just been liberated. Second, to take the ISIS capital in Iraq, Mosul, and third, to take the global capital of ISIS, Raqqa. A year later, our Iraqi partners have liberated Mosul. Our Syrian partners have seized and cleared more than half of Raqqa. And the Iraqis have regained control of Talafar and the rest of northern Iraq for good measure. I think what all of this has shown is that our by, with, and through strategy works, especially when you have capable partners willing to fight. To all the soldiers, Marines, airmen, and sailors, police officers, and civilians of the coalition who supported our partner forces and helped make all this possible, well done. It's now our turn to come off the field, passing the ball to the Phantom Warriors of Three Corps so they can keep moving it down the field to the eventual defeat of ISIS. These achievements deserve some recognition. First, our partner forces in Iraq and Syria, Prime Minister Abadi, Lieutenant General Abdul Amir, the field commander, the resolute troops of the Iraqi security forces, and their tens of thousands of casualties so far. To General Maslum and the brave fighters of the Syrian Democratic Forces and the more than 1,000 casualties that they have suffered this last year. You have our deep respect. We're proud to stand in the phalanx alongside all of you. The region and the world owes you a debt for our own security. Next, I'd like to thank General Votel and his staff at U.S. Central Command and my fellow component commanders who are represented here today by uh, Commander of U.S. Army Central, and my longtime friend, Lieutenant General Mike Garrett, and my wingman in absentia, Lieutenant Co General uh, Cobra Harigian. General Votel, uh, the highest praise I can give you is you're a commander's commander. Uh, best boss I ever had. And uh, I'll never forget the top cover you've given me on more than one occasion. <laughs> I probably strained that <laughs> at times, uh, but I respect and admire your leadership greatly. Your team is the best higher headquarters I could ever hope for. And your component commanders are the best teammates CJTFOIR could have. Thanks also to our partners from the Diplomatic Corps, uh, Special Presidential, uh, Presidential Envoy Brett McGurk, Ambassador Doug Silliman uh, in Iraq, DCM Stephanie Williams and Joey Hood, and the great professionals at our embassies across the region. It's been a pleasure working with all of you and reassuring to have you in the foxhole with us. And a bravo Zulu. That means well done. That's Navy talk for well done. I'm a joint warrior. To the commanders and staff of this CJTF, our land component command, 
our Special Operations Joint Task Force, the Coalition Air Forces, all the members of this great coalition from different services and many different nations. I've never worked with a more talented, dedicated, and skilled team of professional warriors. You've made me proud to be one of you. Finally, though thankfully few, we must also recognize the sacrifices of our coalition service members, 13 of whom have laid down their lives for this cause this past year, and the sacrifice of their families. There are no words to describe the respect we have for you, and we won't forget you. I'll close by saying our fight to defeat ISIS is not over. The coalition is strong, united, and we remain committed to our partners to bring a lasting defeat to ISIS in Iraq and Syria. To prevent ISIS from exporting their terror around the world and to protect our homelands. There's still a lot of hard work and tough fighting ahead. I'm proud of all we have accomplished thus far, and you heard it expounded here. I'm, but I'm confident my good friend, Lieutenant General Paul Funk, and the Phantom Warriors of Third Armored Corps are exactly the right team to take the reins and help our partners continue the fight to finish ISIS. We wish them a prayer for strength, courage, and victory for the year ahead. One team, many nations, airborne all the way. General Votel, ambassadors, distinguished guests, fellow general officers, and command sergeant majors, thank you for attending today's event. My name is Paul Funk, and I'm a joint and coalition Phantom Warrior. The Phantom Warriors are proud to rejoin the CENTCOM team. As we assume the responsibility of the CJTF OIR mission, I want to publicly loud the, the tremendous achievements of the CJTF OIR led by Lieutenant General and my great friend Steve Townsend and Command Sergeant Major Ben Jones this year. They are world-class leaders and we in the Third Corps are deeply indebted to their entire organization. Because of their efforts, the Phantom Warriors are now confidently prepared to continue the momentum to defeat ISIS. This mission is a testament to the power of a dedicated team. Indeed, we could only have achieved the remarkable successes we've had so far by, with, and through our coalition of 73 partner nations and agencies on the battlefield or in the air over Iraq and Syria. I am humbled and honored to take the helm of this great team. Let me be perfectly clear, the deadly scrouge we are fighting, known by a variety of names to include ISIS, ISIL, and Daesh, is evil. Their brutality forces us to look deep into the heart of darkness. They condone the systematic murder of women and children, the enslavement of religious minorities, and the torture and execution of captive prisoners. Their very existence poses a threat to the civilized world and our way of life. We must defeat them and our collective effort will defeat them. This mission of this task force in Iraq and Syria matters because of the magnificent work of this strong coalition, real change is happening. ISIS is on the run. Our 18th Airborne Corps partners have performed remarkable, remarkably in this campaign and we are committing to forge ahead with the fight. Thanks to Steve and the Sky Dragon team for what you have done for this coalition. It is truly remarkable. This noble effort will take time and there's a long way to go, but I know this team is ready. We have one mission and are joined by many nations. We will defeat ISIS. And I said when I started, my name's Funk and I'm a joint and coalition Phantom Warrior. Thanks for coming today. Thanks everybody. Thank you.
getting old, Steve. <laughs>